All right, everyone. Welcome to the very first episode of the new highly anticipated Provcast reboot. That's right. I'm changing things up. So this is going to be a new regular show that I'm going to be doing monthly, uh, where basically how it's going to work is I'll talk about a certain topic for the first part. Then for part two, I'll be answering your questions that you sent in after the previous episode. Uh, the dumb episodes like Squeaker Wars and Billy Wong live reading, those are going to become Provcast Extra, and those won't have a set schedule, they'll just be whenever I feel like doing them. So you can probably guess from the title and the thumbnail what today's topic is going to be. That's right, we're talking about cumin. Let's bring up our Mr. Coomer over here. You know, I know this is a little alarming. For some of you, this might be like looking straight into a mirror, but let's take a look at him. He's got those bloodshot eyes from long nights of cumin. His pale, sickly skin, untouched by the sun. But hey, at least he's happy, right? Look at that golden smile. Cumin keeps him happy. But honestly, all jokes aside, it's not just people who look like this that are affected. Uh, this is a serious issue that can affect anyone. Terry Crews is a perfect example. He's an actor who does all the uh, Old Spice commercials. But he's written extensively about how his porn addiction negatively affected his life and almost cost him his marriage as well. Uh, he's you know, a perfect example that no matter how strong you are or how strong you think you are, you're still vulnerable. That, that's just how bad this is. Anyone who knows me pretty well will know that this is something I've struggled with as well for the good part of a decade. It reached a breaking point for me back in January. Uh, you guys will remember I left kind of a bizarre announcement that a lot of you guys understandably wrote off as a shitpost, but I also had a lot of positive feedback from that. A lot of you guys admitted that you were going through the same thing as me, and that was really my whole point in getting it all out there, is that I, I was done with you know struggling with it alone, because it's not something that you can fight alone. That's the most important thing that I've learned my whole life really dealing with it is that it's the more help you get the better and that's part of the reason that I wanted to do this show is I wanted to talk about issues that are important to me personally uh, and issues that might be affecting you guys as well this show is a thank you to the people who have stuck with me all these months hell maybe it's even been a year but you guys have stuck with me through thick and thin no matter what happened and I hope by doing this show, I can at least show what kind of appreciation I have for you guys. Uh, honestly speaking, like this show wouldn't even be possible without you. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do this if not for you guys. So there's a lot of different ways that I could have approached this. You know, I could just sit here and rat off stats about how it, you know, affects your libido, it or affects your dopamine receptors or some bullshit or whatever, but. You guys know how to use Google. I don't, I don't need to tell you that. Uh, one thing I will say is, you know, the average age of first exposure, some studies show that that's as low as eight years old. Me personally, I was exposed when I was 12 or 13 around there. And that, that seems to be like around the average age that people get exposed. But rather than bombard you with science and statistics, I figured I'll just talk to you about how it's affected me personally. So I want to be very clear. You guys have noticed that I called it a porn addiction, and I just want to be clear on that. When I say addiction, the definition of it is it's a substance or activity that you can't stop doing despite negative consequences. So it's two things. It affects you or the people around you negatively, and you have, you're either unable or you have extreme difficulty in quitting. So it's not just hard drugs like cocaine or heroin that you can be addicted to. You can be addicted to a lot of things. You can be addicted to coffee. You could be addicted to video games. You could be addicted to gambling. Those are some good examples. But obviously the reason we're here is because, yes, you can be addicted to porn. So as far as the negative effects go, the biggest one for me is you get desensitized to it really quickly. And I think a lot of you will be able to relate to this. Whether you were 12 or 13 like me, whatever your age of first exposure was, you'll probably remember, you know, the very first time you saw a titty or whatever. And at that time, that might have been enough to make you coom, right? But 
over time, just seeing that titty wasn't enough. So you have to see a little more and then a little more. And then soon, like, the normal stuff doesn't even get you off anymore. And before you know it, you're looking at BBW face-sitting or whatever it might be. Just some weird shit that makes you ashamed to watch it. And then sooner or later, you're spending entire hours just clicking away, just looking for the perfect video, right? That you might not even find. And this is characteristic of most addictions, really, is... uh, Take gambling, for example. You know, first, when you start off, you're gambling... $10, $20, whatever. But once the real like addiction sets in, that's where people are gambling away their entire livelihoods. They're gambling away their life savings, their children's college funds, their, their rent, whatever it might be. So where does this become a real problem with porn? Well, you have to understand that everything you watch is very carefully manufactured. Every camera angle every position, every pixel, whatever it might be, it's all carefully constructed in a way to deliver a visual stimulus that you can't get in the real world. So imagine this, you've desensitized yourself so much that you've become acclimated to only being aroused by a level of visual stimulus that's far above what you can recreate in the real world. So you might find yourself And this has happened to real people where they swear off women entirely because they know that they're not going to be able to get the same high that they get from pornography. And why chase them when you have terabytes of any video that you want to watch just one click away? And you might find yourself in a position where, say, you have attracted a woman, but now you're having difficulty being aroused by her. Not because she's ugly or anything, like she could be the most beautiful woman in the world, but you've messed up your brain to the point where you've associated visual stimulus and visual alone with arousal. And even when you have, you know, the feel and touch of a woman in front of you, it just doesn't do it for you. And that's exactly where I found myself a few years ago, because I am excited to announce that I am dating the most beautiful woman in the world, Milkis. And, you know, we had issues. I don't want to get too, you know, nitty gritty into the details, but, you know, it was fucked up and it was a wake up call for me where like, yeah, like something's wrong with my brain. Like this, this, this is bad. And so based on all that, I can say 100% that I and possibly you, if any of this sounds familiar to you, was going through the negative effects of an addiction. And so now you might remember, well, it's got to have two things to be like a true addiction, right? It's got to have the negative effects and you have to be unable to quit. Well, about the whole unable to quit thing, you guys will know by now I'm a pretty honest person. I might even go so far as to say I'm a little too honest and that's why I've made so many enemies. But whatever, that's neither here nor there. My point is, there's been a very select few times in my life that I, a very honest person, have lied. And every single time, it's been to cover up my addiction. And I think that says it all, really. The fact that I would sooner compromise on one of my most important values, honesty, integrity, than just simply quitting. That shows how difficult for me personally it was to quit. And that was sort of my second wake-up call, is me questioning, like, why is this thing so important to me that I need to lie to cover it up? And whether or not that's a reflection of your experience with addiction or not, I'm willing to bet anything that, regardless of the details, you too have found it difficult to quit. And a large part of that is just how easy it is to access. Like I said, one click and you can see whatever video you can imagine. And I won't try and go too deep into conspiratorial waters for that, as far as why that is, but what I will say is it's no accident. It's 100% deliberate that we have easy access to this stuff, and we're hooked on it, and it's affecting our ability to have normal relationships. That's what the elites, the lizard men, whatever you want to call them, that's exactly what they want. So if you're listening to what I'm saying and it's making sense to you and you're starting to think, well, shit, now I want to quit. Where do I start? Well, in the announcement I made, 
back in January, I linked some resources that you might find helpful, and I'll link those in the description of this video as well. But my main thing is don't try to fight it alone. I will say 100% you will fail if you try and take it on alone. For a lot of you guys, I know it was the case for me, this is probably going to be one of the most difficult parts about it, is finding someone and opening up to them about it. It's, it's kind of a weird thing. Most people do it, but yet we're still super uncomfortable about talking about it. Uh, and I think a lot of that stems from the fact that deep down, a lot of us are ashamed about the fact that we do this, and for good reason. But if you don't put that shame aside and open up and be honest with someone, it's going to be really difficult. So what I would recommend is whoever this person might be that you talk to, tell them like, hey, I've been struggling with this. I want to quit and then keep them posted. Say, you know, if you've gone six weeks without it, let them know, hey, if you fucked up and it happens, if you screwed up, tell them. So at least someone can hold you accountable. Like the thing about the thing that I found really difficult about quitting is that I do my business in private as I would hope most of you guys do as well but when you do something in private you're not accountable when you screw up and so you develop this mindset where you're like oh well if I screw up no one's gonna find out so it's as if it never happened but it did and you're gonna feel the effects of it so if you're seriously thinking about quitting that's where I say you should start is Find someone who will hold you accountable and make sure that they do. So good luck to you guys. The road ahead is not going to be easy. I can promise you that, but if you stick to it, you will find it very rewarding. So that really concludes everything I want to talk about in this episode. As far as how next episode's gonna work, I will open up the questions channel in Proverty, my Discord server. So just scroll all the way to the bottom, and if you're not in the server, the link will be in the description of this video. So you can either post your questions there, and I'll answer them next episode, or if you prefer your questions to be more private, you can DM those to me, and I'll get through them while keeping you 100% anonymous. So like I said earlier, those questions can be about anything that I discussed in this episode, or they can just be random questions out of the blue. I don't care. Whatever you want to discuss, I'll answer. And... If you've made it this far, really, I mean this from the bottom of my heart, like I really appreciate it because it means a lot to me that you guys care enough about what I have to say to want to sit through 15 minutes of me bullshitting. So really, really, really thank you guys so much and I will see you on the next one. Peace.